G'day guys, I'm on the hunt for an old bulldozer that ground to a halt up here about 15 years ago. They'd been pulling trees out of the forest and it broke down and uh, they were miles from the road. Had some pretty major issues and it was fairly worn out so they ended up just leaving it here. The owner has told me roughly where it is so I'm going to go up today and have a look at it and see what sort of state it's in, figure out whether it's worth uh, putting any time into fixing or if it's too far gone. It's about two kilometers up this track and um, yeah apparently it's parked up near the top of the ridge so we'll head up there and have a look at it and uh, see what sort of state it's in. The track seems to have disappeared but I know roughly where it is so I'll just walk up this ridge here and um, see where that comes out. I'll put the drone up and figure out the best way through here. See why they left it up here. It's a hell of a long way. Yep, there it is. <sighs> right in the middle of a gorse patch. <sighs> Alright. Oh, what a beast. Looks like it's had a hard life. It's a decent sized blade, nice heavy blade on it. Manual tilt, so you wind these to make it tilt. They could be replaced with a hydraulic arm at some stage to make it a hydraulic tilt. Love the old boot over the exhaust. <laughs> I suppose that keeps the water out of the uh, engine. Man, it's got long rams. Why would they be so long? Maybe it had a bucket on the front at one stage. Because that, that would lift it probably 10 feet high, those rams. What are those tracks like? Pretty solid. Ooh, that one's a bit loose. Hey, what's going on there? Oh, that track's broken. Damn it. Yeah, the... The links, the links seem okay. They're not broken, so... Maybe it's just lost a pin. No, I can't feel it there, you would think. If it had fallen out, you would think surely it would be nearby somewhere. That's going to be fun to fix. I'd have to jack this whole side up and um, try to pull it back together. Oh, it's got a winch. That would be useful, pulling trees out. Those pins are quite worn out. The oval shaped but I can't feel any holes in them there's a few more arrows left in them okay it's got a starter motor that's good no pony motor on these 
Oh, there's the exhaust. Nothing seems to be missing off the engine. Let's see if it's got any water in the radiator. No, bone dry. Nothing. Have a look at the controls and see how they feel. Full of spiders probably. Throttle moves. So that's the clutch I think. That seems to be engaging. Steering clutches feel positive, like there's a bit of life left in them. It feels like there's a bit of life left in the brakes. They feel good. Nothing seems to be seized up. So that's the blade. Everything's moving freely. bone dry by the look of it. I can see the bottom of the tank. Yep, so it's a 12 volt system. It's going to need quite a big battery being a six cylinder. It's going to be fun to bring up. Okay, six cylinder diesel. There's no turbo on this one. I thought these had a turbo. Must have been taken off at some stage. Oh, well, it doesn't really matter. Still going to be plenty for what I need. Yeah, it's got plenty of oil there. Doesn't look that bad either. For sitting out here for so long. I guess having the uh, gumboot over the exhaust has kept the rainwater out of the engine. So that's a good thing. I didn't bring any tools with me today. I just sort of wanted to assess it and see if it's worth um, playing around with. But it seems like it's got potential. Everything seems to be there. So I'll write a list of things I'm going to need and come back in a few days and have a crack at getting that engine running. So I'll just turn that fuel off for now and we'll clean the sediment bowl and then we can turn it back on and bleed the lines. Alright, it's got a bit of sediment in there so I'll clean that out. And there's a little filter in there so we'll give that a clean. That's quite filthy. that fuel on. Right let's see if we can bleed that sediment bowl. Yep it's coming out of there all right. So that's all the air out of the sediment bowl. We can shut that one. So the fuel comes down this line from the tank through the sediment bowl and back along this line to these two filters. So we want to purge all the air out of the system. So there's bleeders on top of each filter. So we'll open those up. 
and that one. You should see some fuel coming through there soon. There we go. That didn't take long. Just a little bit of air come out of there. And shut it again. And we'll wait for this next one. Yep, there it is. So we'll close that up. So that's purged all the air out of the filters. So the line goes from that second filter to there. So we'll loosen that nut and try and get all the air out of that line. Yep, there we go. That's all the air out. You can see fuel coming through there. So we've got fuel to the fuel pump now. Purged all the air out of the lines. So we'll tighten it up and have a go at starting it. That throttle moves freely. We'll check this air filter. Right, that looks pretty good to me. There's no water in there, it's nice and clean. And have a look down, you can see through the top here, there's no mice nest or anything in there. So the air filter's good. All right, positive earth, I believe, for these. Fingers crossed. It doesn't seem to be getting fuel yet, so I'll crack these injectors and see if we can get some fuel pumping out of there. Um, because I think it's there's probably an airlock in there, so we'll, we'll try that first of all. So we seem to be getting fuel through now. Alright, glow plugs. And contact.
yeah, it's alive. <laughs> How about that, eh? Doesn't sound too bad at all, actually. That's brilliant. Uh, we've got a problem with the fuel pump here. There's uh, diesel pouring out of the bottom of it. It doesn't seem to be sucking air in, though, because the engine sounds okay, but, um, yeah, maybe when we put it under load we'll notice it. Um, but it should be okay to get out of here if it doesn't get any worse. Not much I can really do here anyway. It looks like that fuel pump maybe has to come out and um, be resealed or something. Oh well, we're halfway there. Got that engine running. I managed to put it in gear and um, move that track back and forth. So I think the gearbox and clutch are okay. Um, hydraulics seem okay. I lifted the blade up and down. So I think they'll be alright. So I just have to concentrate on putting that track back together now. 34.66 I'll try and get that back one yeah 34.67 so if I make the pin a bit bigger about 34.7 ish uh, it should be a nice snug fit in there length will be slightly longer than my calipers so around about one 165-ish, I think, should do it for the length. That would be pretty close. Yeah. I'll probably do it. about right that's pretty much perfect lengthwise yeah that's spot on that will do it so I'll just have to take that top piece off it grind that off and turn it down on the lathe slightly and that should do the job I think That's spot on. Alright, that's going to be a really tight fit, so I'll put that in the freezer for an hour and just let it let it shrink down a little bit and um, we'll go and try and put it on. Alright, I've brought the jack up today and I'm keeping the pin um, in the chili bin with ice packs just to shrink it down as much as I can and that'll make it easier to get in. So we'll try and lift the side up, get the track under, and smack that pin in.
So I've got some blocks under the blade there and that's taking the weight on this side. Sprockets engaged on the pins, everything looks good, that's all lined up nicely, all the rollers are lined up, that's looking pretty good. It's nice and cold, so that's shrunk down, and I'll knock that in. Got it. Finally. Oh well, that's the pin in place. Um, that was a nice tight fit, so I think it'll be alright to walk out of here. I'll just check it every now and then to make sure it's not moving, but I think that'll be fine to get out of here. That's looking good. That tension is working okay. I'll check it again once I've moved forward a bit just to try and take any slack out of it because I don't really want to drop a track uh, in, in the scrub it'll be a mission to get back on so we'll try and keep those tracks nice and tight I suppose we better check that gearbox oil Well, it does have oil. It's, it is foamy, but it's um, that's probably just because the engine's been running possibly a bit of moisture in there, but I think that'll be okay to get us home. Alright, let's try and get out of here.
that tracks are starting to come off, so I'm gonna have to try and get that back under there. It's just pushing a little bit too much through. It's quite dense in here, so I'm sort of having to push it aside and try and get through that old track. You can see the rollers aren't quite lined up and the, uh, the track slipped off there, so it's so worn out that it does drop off quite easily, so I'm gonna have to get some track guards for it, I think, to keep that, uh, to keep that track on. We're making progress. I'm over halfway now, so getting there. That pin seems to be staying in. It's all good so far. It's leaking quite a bit of fuel, so I'm going to make a little catcher to put under the fuel pump. And when it fills up, I can put it back in the tank. Otherwise, I'll probably run out of diesel, I think. Just a temporary fix uh, to get me home.
made it. It was a bit of a mission getting it on the truck. We had to take the blade off and um, walk it up the loading ramp. It only just fitted on. The, the truck driver didn't want to be filmed, so I had to turn the camera off. But yeah, it was uh, definitely worth the effort. That did really well. Chugged up the hill, no problems. I think it's got quite a good engine actually. Um, it didn't it didn't falter at all. There's a, a little bit of a oil leak there around the head gasket. Yeah, that'll be some, another thing to watch. Keep an eye on. There's that pin there. Yep, that's still holding up. That hasn't moved, so that's good. Was a bit worried about that coming out. That track needs tensioning again. I'm gonna have to try and get some track track guards for this just to uh, keep it on there a bit better because um, once it starts walking off, if you don't stop, it pulls itself off the sprocket or the idler. The other side does have track guards, so yeah, that wasn't so bad. Whoa, that's just about falling off. Lucky that didn't come off actually. Looks like the bolts are broken there. Probably just easier to weld that on, I think. Rather than trying to get those bolts out. How would you get those broken bolts out of there? I suppose you'd have to jack this side right up and um, extract them, drill them out somehow. Uh, so that's one job to do, sort out the track guards. It is pretty worn out, it's done a lot of hours and um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff on it that could do with improvements, like that there. What are you going to do about that, I suppose? Take that whole thing off and try and rebush it. But uh, that would get quite expensive. Or I could just use it as is for now and um, keep an eye out for a parts machine, maybe. But the first thing I think I have to sort out is this diesel leak, because yeah, I'll put that container under there it's just about full so that's probably two cups of diesel come out of there does anyone know much about these pumps are they easy to get off or should I try and come in from the bottom and get the, the base plate off and try and work from underneath I don't know but yeah that needs sorting out so but I mean it doesn't seem to suck air in or anything it's uh it just leaks out what else Oh yeah, we'll try and we'll try and get that winch going as well. It does free spool, so it's not seized up or anything. Oh well, that winch works okay. So I'll try and get hold of some cable for that and see if we can pull a few trees out, maybe. I'll turn that fuel off because otherwise it's going to leak all out of the fuel pump. We'll leave it there for now. I'm off to have a beer. See you next time.